2002. A battle rages in the lab of a dairy research facility in Dom saint romain France. The bacteria that produce the world's cheeses and yogurts struggle to resist an invading virus seemingly taken from a nightmare. The phage virus, harmless to humans, deadly to the fermentation bacteria that support the dairy industry. In the aftermath at the lab, only bacteria with phage virus immunity survive. Like many times before, the immune bacteria will be cultivated and sold to dairy producers to protect against outbreaks that could devastate the global supply of yogurt and cheese. But only after a short detour. This time, researcher Philippe Horvath follows through on a hunch. He examines the DNA of one of the surviving bacteria. What he finds is a world-changing tool that promises humankind the extraordinary ability to easily edit our own DNA. So I believe I am perceived as a perfectionist, which is often considered a drawback. Not for Horvath. The son of a seamstress and a toolmaker, he spent his high school years in Colmar, Alsace, perfecting the only thing that mattered to a teenager in the 1980s, solving a Rubik's Cube in 30 seconds. After completing his PhD at Louis Pasteur University in Strasbourg, France, Horvath went to work at Danesco, a dairy research lab eventually purchased by DuPont. This put Horvath on the front lines in the war against the phage virus. August 2002, Horvath attends a biology conference where he spots a poster depicting a familiar bacteria used in yogurt and cheese. The poster describes cryptic, repeating sequences in the bacteria's DNA. In the 1980s, biologists had been fascinated by mysterious repeating sequences in the DNA of some bacteria. Small clusters of sequences appear over and over again, like this, separated by strings of seemingly random code called spacers. Scientists dubbed the phenomenon CRISPR. The most important word in CRISPR is the last uh, R, which means repeats. Over the decades, attempts to puzzle out the meaning of CRISPR sequences ultimately fall short. Horvath and his team begin their own research. Hunched over a readout of CRISPR sequences, he stumbles quickly upon a realization. The cryptic message isn't in the repeating sequences. It's the stuff in between. What seems random to others, Horvath recognizes almost instantly. Shockingly, the spacer sequences in bacterial DNA are actually genetic signatures of phage viruses. It's exactly a memory based on DNA of a former uh, encounters with, uh, with viruses. This was a landmark discovery. If a bacterium survives a phage infection, the bacterium embeds a signature of the virus directly into its DNA. Later, when a new phage injects its DNA into the bacterium, a special protein armed with the CRISPR sequences reads the virus's genetic material. If it finds a match, the protein uses molecular scissors to precisely snip the sequence within the phage DNA disabling it and stopping the infection. Incredibly, other researchers have shown that this editing process can be adopted and used to edit any kind of DNA, including human. Armed with a target DNA sequence and inserted into human or other cells, the scissoring protein can precisely snip and remove any segment at will. Scientists inject a custom segment of replacement DNA and the cell naturally puts everything together again. This is poised to be a game changer in our approach to curing disease. In the future, doctors might be able to edit genetic diseases like cystic fibrosis, hemophilia, and anemia, not just from a single patient's DNA, but for all the future generations. But with this new technology, our society will also have important choices to make, like when is it right to use it, and who will get to decide. The CRISPR-based gene editing tools derived from their work are changing the rules of biology. And to be fair, these just might be the most important discoveries to come from the pursuit of endless cheese.